Uh, do you see it? It's right in frame. Somebody left something in the woods. Oh man, that's dangerous. Okay. Yeah, I'm not using it. That looks right. Hey, this is Mike B with Mike's Wild World. It might look a little, little funky, but don't let that uh, bright sunlight fool you. It's chilly out here today. I got a little hot hiking, so I took my overcoat off and I got this one on underneath it. And uh, that feels pretty good, but it is chilly. I, I put this up to be a kind of a windbreak because there's a, I can still feel the breeze coming down through here. Uh, what I want to do is uh, show you something different today. You probably remember this pot from the last video about the best trail food ever. Um, this is what I was using for, you know, my kettle to cook with. Today I want to see if I can cook a stew in here. Um, but what we're going to do is something different. I, I'm absolutely uh, crazy about my um, Kenway, you know, some people call it a stick stove. Um, I call it a gasifier stove because you can use so many different fuels in it. If you want to use uh, solid fuel, if you want to use alcohol, if you want to use sticks. Uh, I've cooked with it with the uh, compressed pellets before. And all those work out really well. What I'm concerned about is usually if I run out of fuel uh, on an extended day or too many cookouts or whatever, I can always go to, to wood and use it as it was intended. The thing that I like about it is that it's very stable. It fits, you know, round on the ground, you know, all the way around. And the, although there are three prongs on the top, and I don't care for that. I wish there was a ring or at least a fourth uh, support on there. I, I don't know why anybody's not doing that. Maybe Solo or somebody like that has picked up on that idea that everybody's complaining about it and they would fix that. But my frying pan fits just right into that. But, you know, that's kind of uh, been running its course now. Uh, so the thing, excuse me, the thing that is uh, kind of all the rage now, and I know why, if I can get it open, Pull this up here. Ah, I can't get it out of the box. Sure I can. There we go. I'm going to tilt this down just a touch. Okay, so you can see this. Uh, it's the split stove. It's the gas stove that's split. Now, I've been using pocket rockets and things like that. And I've always had a concern that the heat from the cup or if you was using a skillet or maybe even cast iron is going to reflect a lot of heat back down on that tank. Should you be negligent and not quite pay attention to what you're doing or walk away from the fire and come back, you could probably heat that canister up considerably and there could be a violent explosion about that. I've never been happy with the idea that the canister sits under the burner. And that's only a problem when the pan starts getting larger or you put some type of oven on top of it. You know, a bigger cast iron skillet, that could reflect a lot of heat down. Uh, so you just don't want to get into that. What we're going to do is I'm going to open this one up this is a split gas, you know, the tank goes over here and then this goes out. So let's open it up just like that, if you can see it. I've never used this one before. So this is a, a new treat for me to see how well it goes and how well you can regulate the, the heat on it. What I wouldn't normally do is cook a large or a long meal on a gas stove because it uses a lot of gas. You have to cook for a long time. But I think that was the whole purpose of me getting this is that I could turn the heat down considerably and just simmer things uh, and hopefully this will be much more efficient. Uh, this is what everybody's using of course and lots of different brands. That on, not a problem. And you should be able to hear it. Right, just like that. A lot of control over it but the canister's out to the side. Nor what I would like to do is to use my small Dutch oven, you know, little feller like that. But, you know, that thing weighs about four pounds, so backpacking is not my idea of fun. I found an old lighter uh, on my way in today, and I, I've been checking it out to see if it will spark, because it's really on my knee, but, you know, there's really almost nothing going on. If I put it in the dark, I see it a spark every now and then, so I'm not going to go there. Everybody has a way to 
start a fire. This is a Zippo. You might be used to Zippo lighters or what it, all it has is a flint wheel on the top. It has an arrow. Let's see, it goes in that direction. You know, so it's kind of like a ferro rod. Man, that's exactly what it's like. And underneath it, um, let's re add a, a new flint. It comes with these. I'm just going to let you. I don't know if that won't work. It comes with some fire lighters like that. And you can light them up really easy. They burn for a while. But this is a cotton pad I put in there. My experience has been with this cotton pad that you can just rough this up, put a spark on it, and it lights right up. I don't need that today. If I was building a campfire, that's what I would do. So you don't need anything special. It's not treated with anything. Uh, the cotton is just plain cotton. So let me put this back together. Let's see if we can... Uh, just light this up this way. Turn it in the correct direction. That's a pretty good spark. I hear it. There she goes. That's the first time I've ever done that, so I had no idea what to expect from it. You can hear the flame and, oh yeah, that's good. So anyway, uh, consider the Zippo, uh, if you wanted to look for something that's highly durable, you can put extra flints inside with this if you wanted to, um, and then light it up. I really, I really like this. It's not dependent on fuel for any reason. Okay, and there we go. Since you saw me cook, you know, just boil water in this kettle last time, I decided I wanted to do something a little different. This holds <laughs> a full liter of water. And uh, you can you can pour your whole bottle in here with no problem at all. Um, but what I found was that when I went to pour it, it it does it dribbles a lot, and that was it was very annoying to me to do that. But I thought I actually really wanted to cook with that, so I did some looking around, looking for a tiny coffee pot. What do you think? Now it's just for heating water. Let me turn that off. It's just for heating water, see, but you can use it like this. It's after a, actually, excuse this, put this down. There we go. It's actually a frothing, a milk frothing jar, but it's stainless steel and it holds, it's just, you know, two cups of water, um, which is plenty for any dehydrated meals, a cup and a half to a cup and three quarters. Uh, and it certainly is plenty for a cup of coffee. So I want to get some water heated first, and then I'm going to uh, try to cook up a stew in this other pot. Now, the idea of this is small enough that you could use it with your pocket rocket as well. So I went ahead and closed up this piece right here so it will clip, sit clearly on here. And, uh, you know, to save fuel... It should be plenty. There we go. That went pretty well. Let's see what's going on. Oh, you won't be able to see the flame, that's for sure. I really like the split stove design. I was always concerned about stoves that you might see, um, which were really high. Even with the um, Kenway, you're, you know, you're starting to get some height to it if you have a big pot on it uh, with the twig stove. But it's round, so it makes really good contact. People have been used to using propane stoves for a very long time with the large cylinder, but that does not work well with backpacking. That cylinder weighs I'm not really what it was. It's pretty heavy. It's a couple of pounds anyway, plus the stove that goes with it. What makes it really attractive, I think, for camping is that it has, the, you know, the square base. Uh, and that's what makes it very stable. It's in full contact. But as you can see here, you know, we're not getting that particular amount of contact. So let me see how it's going in there. Oh, I see bubbles. Okay. And you can see it, you know. Oh, my God. Look at here. <laughs> okay. Not the brightest tack in the pack today. Let's do it again. Okay. All right, well, 
I've got to put some more water in this. There we go. I spilt it. You think it doesn't happen? It does. Because it's just water, I'm going to turn this thing up pretty good. That flame is it's doing pretty good. Like I said, it's chilly out today, so uh, this canister must be pretty low. I knew it wasn't full, but I didn't think it would be a problem. There's, there's probably the problem with small canisters is they don't, don't deliver a lot. It's already warm. What's happening is I really didn't bring the right canister. Uh, this is the one I knew it was partially used, but my spare is not in my bag. Uh, I do have another source for cooking if I need to. Um, there's, if you shake it, you get a little bit out of it. This can is almost gone. Let's see what we're doing with our pot. You can see a little bit of steam coming out of there. The water's probably hot enough. I'm going to check and see. No, it needs more. On a day like today, watch me, I'll probably spill most of my water if I don't quit goofing around with it. Okay, so uh, I'm about out of fuel. It's not doing much. Can you hear it? I wonder what happens when you get liquid. Okay, you can, can you see it now? You see it burn? They tell us not to do that. It might get there. Oh, I hear it boiling. I'm going to try to cook on this. If not, I'll go to my alternative method for cooking. What I was trying not to do was to raise a big smoke cloud. There are some places where, you know, obviously... Some places... Excuse me. Some places you just want, don't want a lot of smoke. You don't want to attract a lot of attention to yourself as to where you might be. This is one of those places where I feel a little uncomfortable with smoke going up in the sky. Um, nothing wrong with it. Uh, just for today, I feel uncomfortable uh, about that situation that somebody might be coming to check and see. And then I gotta explain what I'm doing, okay, right? Okay, so, but I have some, uh, a different kind of fuel tab that I can use to try to cook with, but I'll have to be set to go when I do that. So uh, I took my hat off. It's, it has warmed up a little bit now. Uh, this is working pretty good with the, the breeze blocker back here. And um, it is the warmest part of the day, but it's not going to be long. As you can see, the sun's going behind a tree. It's not going to be long. It's going to be going over the hill. So I think that coffee, that water is hot enough now. We're going to give that a shot. Oh yeah, there's the, there's the steam. That's a really nice pour spout. works very well okay nice full cup I am so looking forward to this <laughs> oh that's hot yeah 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 that's hot that's some beef Unfortunately, it's still frozen. Uh, wasn't a warm day today, and uh, we'll see. I'm going to take the rest of this hot water, put it in with it. Just gap it open. We'll see how that goes. Let's see if we have enough fuel. If we don't, we're going to come back with something called dragon clean solid fuel you could put this on anything light it and cook over it it's supposed to be extremely hot we'll see how that works and it's really just a uh, solidified um, alcohol type bar but it's supposed to be really really hot we'll see i love that part do not eat no i wouldn't do that although it does look like a dipping sauce right
Okay, now the temperature is starting to drop out here. I can feel this really setting in uh, with the sun sinking down in the in the sky. So I'm going to get something here probably to just put right here. Maybe stop that from, you know, all the coal from going into the ground. And uh, we'll get that going. Never done this before. But I don't want to cook on plastic. But I do want to use the foil top that comes with this. There we go. Pretty sure it's just going to slide right off. What would be interesting is if this sparker would like that. I don't think it will. But I don't see any way it can. So we're going to need a flame. Remember that cotton pad? A good place to try it, right? Right here. See if it'll light this up. Of course, the more you pull up, I think the better it's going to be. Now, when this lights, I'm going to have to get rid of it pretty fast because it, it spreads to your fingers really fast. Just plain cotton. Let's see if that works. Now I used green bamboo. Hopefully they will not catch on fire during the, the duration of this cooking. So we'll see. Oh yeah. She's boiling already. Of course it was already hot from before. So what I really want to do here is I have some additional items to put in. Get that off. Um, I have a few little carrots. Huh? What about that? Huh? A few carrots? How about all of them? Huh? Huh? Let's put all of them in, right? I haven't eaten today. And a few potatoes. You like my potatoes? Those are little babies, right? Yeah, there we go. Let's get another one in there. Let's get the smallest ones we can find. Well, I'm impressed with the fire. How long it's going to last, we'll see. We'll get that down in there. Let's see. See, it's coming along. Ah, look at there. I don't think that's going to last long, to be honest with you. I just, I, I don't see that. Ouch. Ouch. Whoa, that's close. Ouch. Okay. Whoa, that's even closer. Like a dingleberry. Top on. There we go. Okay. See? Top back on. Keep all the heat in. What do you think? You think we're going to eat that? Man, it's just looking a little iffy. That flame is almost out. I see a good chance for a wood fire, don't you? Yeah. Twigs. So the sun is going down. And it is getting cool. So I might enjoy a little bit of fire here. Let's make one. That's green. That's not. That is. A lot of this wood is wet. I think I'm gonna need something bigger and better than that. Get it burning. And if you can hear me, I'm pulling cane tops. I'll show you what they do. These grow down in the river bottom where I'm at. No, oh, well, that didn't stay that way, did it?
we got to get the fire going first. The wood is extremely damp. <clears throat> and there's no trees around here with low lying, low hanging limbs. Yeah, gotta dry out some sticks. We got our coal base. There you go. Now normally I wouldn't keep boiling on fire. It's already burning. But I need to rush this one. I hope the hot water helped it to cook some. Uh, while it was sitting and waiting. What you may not be aware of is the temperature is dropping rapidly. My hat's going back on my head. My Nanook of the North. That feels so much better. I'm trying to build a fire basically around the pot without, you know, knocking it off. It's a cradle. I don't care if it smokes this one up. I hear the water boiling, so we're getting there. If I leave the top on, it boils over. So we're going to try to let it cook like this. Okay, so what about seasoning? You haven't seen any salt or pepper or anything like that that most people would put in there. Well, ah, there's one thing in particular, and that's a little bit of Mikey sauce right there. That's full of all kind of flavor. We'll just put that in. That should do it. All right, so what's been going on here is that I've been having to go up the hill about 50 yards to find some standing trees uh, that have... Uh, low-lying, low-hanging limbs, you know, that are brittle and not damp because it's been raining here for days and everything is slightly damp, everything on the ground. Um, so we got the fire going. As you can see, the pot is absolutely just blackened to pieces. However, that's not, that's not really a problem. I don't really mind. And I'm actually <laughs> kind of sweating over here <laughs> sitting next to this fire. Let's take a peek inside. If I can get in here without uh, roasting my fingers. And there she is. These are boiling. That's looking good. Looking good. Okay. And that will be the last of the wood. When that burns down, we'll just use the coals. Alright, so I'm anxious to get into this. And what you see here is a vacuum bowl. It's an insulated uh, bowl when you know with two sides. So, let's see what we got here. Oh, that might do. And that's why I can pick it up and hold it because it's not, the heat's not going through the other side. Yeah, look at that, look at that. It, those are done, those are done. I don't know about, yep, potatoes are done too. So, Insulated bowl, hot potato. Well, I know everybody says that, but, you know, um, well, it's pretty good stuff. Let's see what the, let's see what the beef has to offer, right? Not bad. Not bad for a, um, the gas, and then the solidified gel, and then cooking with wood just to achieve that. If I'd had my gasification stove, we'd been up and running in that thing in no time. And I wouldn't have had all that problem with the wood because it would not consume as much as an open fire. I wouldn't have smoked up my pot the way I did. Oh, that's good. I want to touch it. A perfectly nice shiny pot and turned it into that. Now, that's okay if that's what I'm going to use it for the next time. I'll just clean it up some, you know. It goes with the territory. Hmm. Yeah. 
I can do that. But what it needs is a little more Mikey sauce. There it goes. That will help cool it off a little bit in the meantime. All right. Because you know, it's chilly out here, and that's chilly too. So, well, it's not chilly. I wish I had some chilly. Yeah. And insulated bowls I find to be really neat. If I put it in my stainless steel plate, um, it just goes straight through to my hand. And um, I don't want to do that. If you haven't made the micro sauce yet, take a look at it. I'll put the recipe in. I'm sorry about slurping. My God, that's good. And there's no salt, no... I didn't even get to put it. I have a shallot. I was going to cut that up and put it in, but things were not going in my direction today, so... I, I did not do that. I'm glad I didn't. This is fine, just the way it is. Little potatoes. Mmm. So, I'm sure you're full of comments. As one guy who commented said, if I was in a survival situation, talking about me, I would die. That's what he said. Well, you know, not every day is, you know, the same as the next day. I didn't come out prepared to, to do anything but really be here in the woods for a while today. I didn't realize how cold it really was. Every time I take my hat off, I get cold. There's about one more serving in, in the pot, and I'm pre pretty sure I'm going to eat that. Um... What I've got now is just this, you know, little fireplace here. And I'll clean all that up and put it out. And you can see why I'm concerned, because of all the leaves here. I didn't really want an open fire here. I mean, let's be real. How many of us have actually set the woods on fire, ever? A few of you probably. I have not. I did have fireworks that set a, a room sage field on fire one time. And my answer to it was to urinate on it and put it out. And, well, it actually worked, you know. I had to get some help, of course, you know. So that was a, it was a good moment, you know, actually. <laughs> that, was, that was one of those funny days, you know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I hope you can glean some information from that to see the different things. The um, gelled alcohol burnt really hot. Now, that, that did work quite well. Uh, but it burned out extremely fast, not according to what they said it would do. So I'm still in love with the solid fuel tabs, and I will definitely be back to using my gasification stove um, and cooking this meal again. This is really good, and the temperature is just whew, man, it's going down. I got I got some stuff over here. Got my jacket and all, but uh, uh, just uh, over the last couple of days, like this morning. It was 24 degrees, and um, my plans was to run out kind of early, and everything was white. You'd swear it had snowed, but it did not. You know, this is uh, sunny South Carolina, and you would think, oh, it just doesn't do that. Yes, it does. It gets really cold, and then it warms up like it kind of did today, and tonight it'll be back down below, way below freezing. So, um, you know, we didn't get the snow and the ice of the nor'easter that just went through here a few days ago. We did get really cold temperatures. So this is might be from Mike's Word. If you got any comments or suggestions, please put them in there. Uh, now, a lot of the stuff that I did here was really just kind of trial and error and making things work. I, I would have been much more prepared had my life depended on it, but I'm actually packing my bag and heading out of these woods today. I hope to be home in the company of my soft recliner watching a little television with, you know, something, something in a glass maybe. So uh, that's how I'm gonna end my day. So um, until next time, this is Mike B. from Mike Swell World. Have a good one. Almost like it never even happened.